Who doesn't love a roller coaster? The twists, the turns, the stomach churning drops, the loop the loops. They are so cleverly designed to give you a thrill, to make you feel like you're falling all while keeping you safely in your seat. But how? The very first roller coasters were basically just hills of snow in the gardens of Russian palaces. They were called Russian mountains, and even the ruler, Catherine the Great, enjoyed sliding down their steep slopes before she had afternoon tea. Hmm. Woo -hoo! Ew! Oh. Yeah. If you're wondering when the first roller coaster that could loop the loop was built, it was over 150 years ago in 1846 in Paris. Sacre bleu! C'est quoi un de Eiffel? And today, there are more than 4,000 roller coasters all over the world, so you should be able to find one wherever you are, except perhaps Antarctica. Throughout the winter, adult penguins and their young face many hours of waiting for, oh, tickets it seems. Extraordinary. So much like us, these Antarctica penguins appear to have devised and built the very first roller coaster on the continent. Eventually, the ride ends and the penguins must make way so their friends can have a turn. They are so much fun. Uh, let me know in the comments below what your favourite coaster is. But have you ever wondered, how do they work? How do they manage to go so fast around all those bends and loops without falling off the tracks? Well, it all starts with the train. That's the name for the bit with the seats and the harnesses that you sit in, or sometimes dangle from, to go around the track. There's lots of different designs for roller coaster trains, but they all have the same job, keeping you safely in place and moving around the track as fast as possible. To do that, they have wheels. Wheels are great. Without them, the train would have to slide along the track and would quickly be slowed down by a force called friction. When wheels are in contact with the track, they're not sliding, they're rolling. So there's much, much less resistance to the forward movement. Now, the wheels of a roller coaster are special. Instead of one set of wheels resting on the top of the track like a normal train, a carriage has two extra sets of wheels, one underneath the track and one to the side of the track. And that means that whichever way it twists and turns, the train is locked onto the track with one or more wheels holding it in place. But there isn't a giant hand from a Greg in the sky, pushing you around the track. And just rolling backwards and forwards is not gonna get you screaming with your hands in the air. So what are we missing? The first thing we need to do is get moving. And for that, we can use our good old friend, gravity. Have you noticed how most roller coasters start with a long, slow pull up a long, straight hill? Let me show you. This is the only time the train is actually pushed or pulled anywhere, normally by being carried on a chain powered by a motor. Bring it up, tension is mounting, stop. Gravity is an invisible force that's constantly trying to pull everything down to the ground. So by raising our train up high, we're working against gravity. Once it goes over the top, Hands up. Gravity can do its thing, pulling the train straight down. But remember, it's attached to the track, so it follows wherever that goes. Should we go back up again? Yes, Greg. Okay. The force of gravity makes it speed up, accelerating the train and giving it momentum. You're done, hop off. 
The higher the drop, the more speed and momentum the train can build up and the further it will go before it eventually slows down. And with barely any friction to slow it down, that can take a long time. The train will actually have enough momentum to go back uphill against the pull of gravity as long as the second hill is lower than the first hill. <laughs> The train can perform loads of daring moves before brakes eventually bring it to a stop. When it's set off from high enough and is going fast enough, the train's momentum could even be enough to carry it upside down in a loop-the-loop. -loop. Like this one. As you go round the loop-the-loop, -the, -loop, the wheels of the train keep it locked to the track and you feel like you're being pushed hard back into your seat. It's the same feeling you get when you go around a corner in a car. The car turns left, but you feel like you're being pushed to the right. And this feeling comes from the fact that objects prefer to go in straight lines. The train wants to go straight on, but the track is constantly making it change direction to follow the loop. This creates a force called centripetal force that keeps the train curving around the loop, but the rider's bodies want to keep them going straight on and it gives you that feeling of being pushed into your seat when they're upside down. I'm gonna prove the power of centripetal force by swinging this bucket of Lego bricks above my head. Okay. I've gotta get enough momentum going. Yes, they all stay in the bucket, just like you stay in your seat, probably with your arms flailing in the air as you scream. How do I stop? It turns out people really love going upside down. There's a roller coaster in England where you go upside down 14 times. It just makes me feel dizzy thinking about it. So roller coasters are huge fun thanks to gravity and momentum and centripetal force and very little friction. I bet you can't remember that when you're upside down. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, right? Did Greg just glue the bricks in the bucket? Well, let's find out, shall we? No! <laughs> Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. For more awesome Explained with Lego videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and comment below if there's a question that you'd like us to answer next. See ya.